Hello coders! In the previous video in this tutorial, we developed a sliding switch puzzle that will help the user unlock the room. In this video, we will develop a second puzzle that uses graphics and animation. First, I'm going to find my My Projects menu and select Save Project As. This will be the fifth version of our app, so I'll type V5 and click OK. It takes a moment for that change to be reflected in the top left-hand corner of our screen. Once I see my user interface, I notice that App Inventor has once again changed my mobile device back to a phone. So I'm going to switch this back to tablet, which is my preferred size. I'd like to create a new puzzle, but I see my puzzle one is still being shown on the user interface. So I'm going to click on that puzzle. I see that vertical arrangement puzzle one is now selected in my components list and I'm going to uncheck this property for visible. So now I do not see vertical arrangement puzzle one. It's still part of my app, but it's simply not being displayed on my screen so that I have room to develop a second puzzle. That second puzzle is going to use a new component from the drawing and animation drawer on the left bottom side of our screen. If we click on drawing and animation, we see a few options we want the canvas component. I'm going to click and drag that canvas component out on my user interface and drop that right below my horizontal arrangement room block. Next, I'm going to rename that canvas to canvas underscore puzzle two. On the right side of my screen, I'm going to change a few of the properties. I'm going to change the height of that canvas to 500 pixels and click OK. And I'm going to change the width of that canvas component to 400 pixels and click OK. At the top of this property list, I also see there is an option for background image. And I would like to use the Canon image that we uploaded during the first video in this tutorial. If you do not see that in your list, you'll just need to go back to that first video. Selecting that Canon JPEG and clicking OK gives me the background image I'm looking for. Next, we need to add an image sprite to this canvas. So again, back to the left side of our screen, in the drawing and animation drawer, we see image sprite. We can click and drag that and drop that onto our canvas. It's a rather small icon, but that's about to change. I'll start to rename that image sprite. That image sprite is going to become image sprite match. I'll click OK. On the right side of my screen, I can change my property to picture and choose the match PNG file from our first video and click OK. You'll notice that this uh, PNG has a clear background, which is one of the features I was hoping for. If yours does not have a clear background, just go back to that first video and double check that you've downloaded the correct file and saved it as a PNG. I'm going to now adjust some more properties for this image sprite match. I'm going to change the height to 50 pixels. Okay. I'm going to change the width to 50 pixels. Click OK. I'm going to change the X position to 50 pixels and the Y position to 50 pixels. Note about uh, position on a canvas. On a computer or a tablet, the upper left hand corner of the screen or canvas is the origin, which is 0, 0. X is 0 and Y is 0. We have chosen X is 50 and Y is 50. So that positions this sprite 50 pixels to the right and 50 pixels down our screen. And that sprite is positioned by the top left corner of that square image. I'm now ready to jump to the block screen. In my block screen, I have to be mindful that my app uses visibility to show and hide different elements and different levels of my escape room. So one of the first things I need to do on the left side is go to find my Canvas Puzzle 2. 
If I click on Canvas Puzzle 2, I can find down towards the bottom of the list a Canvas Puzzle 2 visible block. It's dark green. And I can drag that out and drop that in my first event handler from one of my earlier videos. So that means when somebody enters my escape room app for the first time, I want the first puzzle one to be visible or true. But for the time being, I will want my second puzzle to be not visible or false. I'm going to need to right click on that block and duplicate it because I will need to also set that to false when my screen one is initialized. I'm going to right click on that one more time and duplicate yet again because down here in the code from our previous video, I'm going to include a similar block here so that when somebody correctly puts all of the switches in the correct positions and this if block executes, it will not only make vertical arrangement puzzle one false, it'll make Canvas Puzzle 2 visible true. Please make sure that is a true so that you can see the second puzzle. We're now going to create a rather large block of code, our largest so far. So I'm going to rearrange my screen. I think I'm going to also right click on this block here and collapse the block so it's not taking up so much room. I'll slide this down. Slide this down and slide this over. I now have some room to create some more code. This code here is going to control the image sprite and it's going to determine whether they solve puzzle two correctly. So I'm going to go find my image sprite drawer on the left hand side and clicking on image sprite match. I have a few different options and I want to find the second option when image sprite match is dragged. I'm going to move this event handler out onto my screen. So I'm hoping that the user can take their finger and drag the match around the canvas in order to solve puzzle two. To do so, I'm going to go back to my image sprite drawer and I'm going to scroll down and look for a purple block, which allows me to move or animate that image sprite. So I grab this call image sprite match move to XY. Click that into place. And I'm now going to hover my mouse over current X. I've got two options here, get and set. I want the get current X and I'll plug that into X. Likewise, I'm going to move my mouse and hover over current Y. I have two options, get current Y and set current Y. I want the get current Y to click into that Y socket. Next, I'm going to need a couple local variables. So for the first time, I'm going to come over here to the left side of my screen and check out the variables drawer. Inside the variables drawer, we have a few options and I'm looking for this option which allows me to initialize some local variables. In computer science, a variable is a container that allows us to store some information. I'm going to need two containers here. So I look at this blue mutator block. I click one time with my mouse, and I can now drag a second variable or second container into this block. I want the first variable to represent the X distance to the fuse on my cannon. I want the second variable to represent the Y distance to the fuse on my cannon. I'm hoping that the user will drag the match sprite to the fuse on the cannon and make it fire. And that will be how they solve puzzle two. This requires a little bit of middle school math you might recall that when we're trying to measure distance on a number line, we need to use absolute value because distance is never a negative number. So we're going to create a few blocks here and drag out some blocks from the math drawer for the first time. 
When I click on the math drawer, I can scroll down here and I should be able to find an absolute value block. I'll drag that out here. And then I can go back to my math drawer and I can look for a subtraction block. Up near the top, here's our subtraction and I'll click that into our absolute value. Finally, we're gonna go back to the math drawer a third time and drag out a number block, which I'm gonna put in the last socket of this new segment that we're developing. And I'm going to put in the number 200 and I'll explain why in a moment. I'm going to drag this assembly up and plug it into the X socket in my local variables. And then I'm going to hover over the current X, grab the get block and plug that into the remaining open socket. I'm gonna now right click on this absolute value block and duplicate so that I can plug in a similar statement into the Y socket. But I have to remember to change this second variable here to the current Y. I'm also going to change this number to 430. Let's take a moment to talk about these numbers. If I jump over to my designer, we have this big cannon here, and I happen to know that this back end of the cannon, where a fuse might be to light and fire the cannon, has a position of 200 pixels to the right and 430 pixels down. So this position, 200, 430, marks the location of my fuse. So back in the block screen, this is going to measure the distance between the match sprite and that fuse. I'm gonna now go to the control drawer and find an if block, if then. This is gonna to check to see if they have used the match to light the fuse. I'll need some logic here to do that. So I'm gonna to go to the logic drawer and grab an and block. We used these in the last video. And I'm gonna go back to the math drawer to find a comparison block. I want this third block here which currently has an equal sign in it, and I'll drag that out. I don't trust that the user can get exactly the right pixel when they're dragging the match, and I wanna give them close enough. So I'm not gonna use the equal sign here, but I'm gonna change this to less than or equal. Next, I'm going to go and grab a number block from the math drawer, and to make this level somewhat easy to solve. I'm gonna say as long as they get the match within 25 pixels of the wick, that will be sufficient for us. I'm gonna click and drag this blue math assembly into the first socket of this and statement. And then I'm gonna drag this green logic block into my if socket. I'm gonna now go and hover over my X to fuse local variable and I'm gonna grab this get block and plug that into the open socket in my blue math block. And now I'm gonna bring my mouse over this blue math block and right click and duplicate it to get the second half of this condition. Please be careful though, we need to change this second expression to check to see if Y is close enough to the fuse. If these conditions are correct, I want to give the user credit for solving the second puzzle, and I wanna give them some positive feedback. We're gonna do that in a few ways. Over on the left side of our screen, we're gonna to go to label secret, opening that drawer, we're gonna look for this dark green set block, and we're gonna drag out set label secret text to, and we'll use a blank text block to finish that statement. That text block will now read secret colon space pi hashtag hashtag. As you may recall from previous videos, the secret code in my app is pir8 pirate. And so if they solve the second puzzle, I want to give them the second character in that secret code. Next, I'm gonna to go to the left side of my screen and I'm going to look down at my player. 
I find my player drawer. I scroll down and I find my player one source block. It's a dark green set block. Click that into place. Back to my text drawer, scrolling to the top, I find an empty text block. If they are able to drag that match sprite and light the fuse on our cannon, I want to play the boom MP3 file. And so I will set that as the source for my player. And finally, I'll go back to the left side of my screen, scroll down to my player component, look for my call player one start, and I'm gonna click that inside my if then statement. Please make sure that that's inside the if then statement in order to get the functionality you want. Now that you've completed this monster block of code, it's time to step back one more time and test and debug our app. I'm gonna begin by expanding the block of code that we collapsed earlier. You can now pause this video and compare your code with the source code you see on the screen here and make sure that the functionality that you expect as the developer is exactly what the user experiences when they run your app. In the next video, I'm gonna go over some creative enhancements that you can incorporate into this app as you personalize it and make it 